Hafeneh and welcome back everybody watching us on KUM TV or streaming us live on YouTube. We appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, well there is an initiative going on in our island community, HPV Vaccine Project. Dr. Joy Mendez and Angela Mummert are here to talk about this very worthwhile effort. Ladies, half a day. Half a day. All right, welcome Thank to you us. for having us here. Well, you're, you're very welcome and we do greatly appreciate the work mm -hmm. that you're doing. So uh, to contextualize this first, um, a lot of people have heard of HPV. I would venture to guess that a lot of people don't know exactly what it is and what it can cause. So mm -hmm. can you break that down for us? Well, that was assigned to me, so <laughs> it's exactly. HPV stands for the human papillomavirus, and it's a common virus that's spread from person to person through sexual activity. And most sexually active people throughout the course of their life will probably get HPV, but they won't even know it because your body can naturally fight it but there are those individuals that develop health problems as a result of being exposed to HPV. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the health problems that you could contract as a result of that? Well, HPV can cause genital warts. It can also, it's been linked to cancer, certain cancers, for instance, cervical cancer. It's also been linked to cancers of the penis and the anus, mm -hmm. as well as uh, cancers of the mouth and throat. Okay, and how much of a, um, danger does this pose on Guam? Obviously, you know, like this, this isn't like a regional thing. This isn't a, you know, cultural or socioeconomic. If it affects us, how wide spread of a problem is it? Well, uh, looking at the statistics for Guam, there were 104 HPV cases that were reported to the Department of Public Health. And looking at cancer st statistics, Pacific Islander women have high rates of cervical cancer, which is one of the cancers that is caused, can be caused by HPV. And um, Chamorro women in particular have three times the U.S. rate, and Micronesian women have six times the U.S. rate for cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. And when you look at cancer, uh, again, uh, in Guam, looking at the 2008 through 2012 data from the Guam Cancer Registry, there were 130 women that were diagnosed with cervical cancer. And sadly, some of those women were women in their early 20s to mid 20s. Mm. And, and that being said, this isn't necessarily a, you know, it's a very crude description, but this isn't like a women's health issue, right? This affects men as well as women. That's true. Uh, men are vulnerable to mm. HPV as are women. And although there are fewer infections among men and cancers related to HPV in men, it does affect them. And I, I mentioned earlier, they could get cancer of the penis, they could get cancers of the anus as well as cancer in their mouth and throat. Okay, so now that we know HPV and the impact on our society, the HPV vaccine project, doctor, um, obviously it seeks to bring a remedy and I would assume like you're trying to spread awareness, increase knowledge. Um, the collaboration of the University of Guam Cancer Center and University of Hawaii Cancer Center, look at the disparity um, on the Pacific and we found out that the vaccination rate, especially for HPV, is low. So, but when we look and reviewed literature, we found out that this challenge is not only for Guam, but even in the States. So what our team did was to review all the studies and came up with the idea, like what worked in the state, what worked in this particular place, and made a proposal to Guam Cancer Trust Fund so that we can help the Department of Public Health, um, Social Services, HPV vaccination program. Mm -hmm. So this is not a standalone HPV project. The main purpose of this project is that to be an arm and to strengthen and solidify already the existing HPV vaccination program mm -hmm. of the island. Is there an age range that you're targeting? Because obviously with the, with the nature of mm -hmm. HPV and how it's transmitted and everything like that, that's a pretty wide wide range, but like maybe how old are you going and conversely, how young are you going? Um, previously, it was only like 11 years old to 26, but now CDC just um, um, gave new guidelines late last year that we can start as early as nine years old. Wow. Yes. Well, I can get, get more information out there. Yes. And speaking of which, where can people go to get more information about this project? Um, they can call our number 689-9990 or they can also email us, hpvproject at triton.uog.edu. All right, well done. Well, certainly this is something that everybody needs to educate themselves about because it's very, very serious. So thank you for the work that you're doing and come back, please, and you'll let us know how the project's going. We truly hope that there will be people that will call our numbers 
for more information and details. Thank you so much for the time you gave us. All right, thank you. We'll do all we can to make sure the word gets out. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Please stay tuned, everybody. More show when we return.